All right, red lights on. Hopefully we're working. Everything seemed to be working beforehand. What's happening, Fish and Friends? Let me know if everything's looking good. I don't see any numbers yet, so check in the old mic. There we are. I think we're good. What's happening, Fish and Friends? Welcome to another live episode. Oh, what are we getting into tonight? Some of the best lures for 2024. Now, this is kind of an open-ended question because... I always have like a lure or a rig that I want to focus on for the next year. So I think I'm going to have to check that, see what we're doing. Um, I'm talking about lures for 2024, what I think are going to be some of the best ones potentially coming out um, or some of the best catchers for us all this year. And kind of some of the lures that have always been good and I think might kind of be making a resurgence because I'm like there's... I see stuff, if you look at the, I'll bring some stuff up here on, on Tackle Warehouse or Omnia or somewhere and we'll look, but some of the new lures that you're seeing coming out are lures that I used to use back in the 90s, you know, so it's stuff kind of has this cyclical, you know, uh, okay, they're good for a while, then maybe the sales drop off, something new comes out, and I'm just as guilty of it, right? Something new comes out and you're using the new thing, <clears throat> and then maybe after a while they say, hey, why don't we bring back the, the doodle -a bob you know, lure, bring that one back, and then all of a sudden it's this big thing, people are like, oh, this is cool. So we're kind of we're kind of hitting everything tonight, kind of an open-ended question. So first off, always want to thank you all. Um, I did put out only one video this week. I am I'm not starting at the new year the way I wanted. I wanted to have two or three, um, but I've already got one in the in the hopper loaded for next week and gonna get another one done tomorrow. So um oh, I was gonna say Kurt Gleason and Kuda. Kuda, I owe you a random lure pick. We can chat on that. And Kurt Gleason, you had the crappie gill and some lures, and you never claimed them. So Kurt Gleason, Kurt Gleason, calling Kurt Gleason. Otherwise, I got everybody out, uh, except for Brandon, my buddy Brandon. He's going to get a, a special one, Brandon V, out in California. He's been a long-time subscriber. He won one, so I'm taking care of him. But anyway, uh, Iowa, man, we have been full of snow, kind of the updates here. Um, snow, snow, lots of snow. I think on Tuesday we had 10 inches here. Des Moines broke a record of like 11.8 inches in a 24-hour period. That was their new record. Then we had like eight more. And I don't know, we've had over 20-some inches of snow. It's been pretty crazy. So lots of snow blowing. Glad I bought a good snowblower years ago. That is money well freaking spent. Um, if you're looking for a snowblower, get a dual-stage snowblower. Don't mess around with those sissy single stages. They're crap. So... Anyway, off my podium. Okay, so new lures coming out for 2024. It's pretty interesting. I've seen, uh, if you've been watching on social media, Berkeley introduced a couple, um, and you can look them up. I didn't have any pictures here. I don't think they're even available yet, but they have the Kredg, which is jerk spelled backwards, K-R-E-J. And it's a, instead of a jerk bait going the normal way with the lip down like this, the lip comes up kind of off the nose of it. So look on Instagram or um and anywhere, I'm sure anywhere in the internets, but they show it working. It's actually pretty cool because it reminds me of the flying lure. Back in the day, guys used to use the flying lure, which was like a, a flat tube. And they would throw it around docks, brush piles and stuff like that. And it would it would go backwards up under the dock. So I could see that working for that. That might be kind of neat messing with it. Um, it's, you know, it's a forward facing sonar thing, which is cool. I'm not uh, against that at all. Uh that debate continues on heated, but I mean, to me, it's just another piece of electronics. So I don't, I don't know, whatever. Um, so I think it'll be cool for that. And then they released another one, which is like this kind of shimmy bait, almost like a spy bait without stuff on it. I don't remember what that one was, but the credge uh, is the one I've been seeing a lot of stuff on. And I'm not paying attention to comments here. I didn't even have comments up yet. Hopefully we're, I should have checked that. Um, let me go back here. I, that would be a bummer if I've been talking for four minutes and nothing's working. Uh, yes. Hello, Debo. You're good. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, I see lots and lots of hellos. Okay, so I'm going to jump back to forward. Um, so yeah, that was uh, that was the other new one. I haven't seen a ton of other like new stuff from companies, so I kind of wanted to open it up to you all. What do you think is going to be one of the big ones of... I did see somebody put that on here. This is one. I got two of these. I threw the one one day, no bites on it. And then I also had this one still in the package. So the Spro Chad, Chad which is cool. I think it's cool that, that KGB, um, that dude did this and worked with them to make a more affordable option because these things are stupid expensive now, like the actual resin ones he makes. So this was a guy that started out as a garage, garage builder. I think it was, I think he's in Missouri, if I remember right. 
Um, but anyway, they're like, I have one of the old, old ones, like 250 bucks now on eBay and crap. But this one's like 40 bucks, I think, on, on you know, Tackle Warehouse Omnia, wherever you shop. Uh, looks great in the water. He talked about it when he was at iCast or whatever. Uh, he said one of them had a better, like, gliding motion, but one of them had a better, like, jerk bait, like, walking motion. I don't remember what it was, but still pretty close, you know, to be, uh, you know, to the original, the resins for a, a, a fraction of the price, which I think is big. You know, a lot of these companies out here, you'll, they get crap for copying or not copying. I'm not going to get into all that. Um, but, you know, some of these things, you can never get them in stock, you know, the JDM stuff. And then they're like a thousand dollars for one of them, you know? So I think it's cool that companies try to make that more affordable. You can get the whole politics of it. Is it exact copy? Is it not? I mean, if you want people to buy yours, keep it in stock and don't make it crazy expensive, I guess is kind of my deal. But um, what else? What else do you all have you seen? There was one. I haven't seen it yet on the I'll just bring this up here on the. Yeah, and I just noticed we're under blizzard. No travel advised just south of me. It's bad. Even Interstate 80. Oh, they do have them on here. Never mind. Um, Interstate 80, which goes east to west, kind of through the middle of Iowa, is like most of its travel not advised blocked blizzardy. It's crazy, man. It was blowing like hell out there this morning. Um, so be safe if you're anywhere where it's snowing now. I know a lot of us got hit, but this was our first big, huge week. The kids were out of school like three days, I think. <clears throat> they called off. So be careful. Drive slow. Okay, so here they are, actually. I didn't even know they were out yet. So the Kredg. Oh, and the finisher. Finish him. So here's the Kredg. It's like an upside down jerkbait kind of deal. Um, and I don't, yeah, they're not going to have it on here, but look on, look on Instagram and they have the motion of it, like showing in the test tank, which is pretty cool. Line ties up there. It's got the upturned lip and then the finisher is this one. So it kind of looks like a little jerk bait, spy bait type thing. You tie it up top and it's a shimmy, like a, a sinking deal. The switch was another big one. I know there was a lot of talk about that. It wasn't one that I was interested in. It's more of a, you know, a jigging vertical lure forward-facing sonar thing. I know a lot, of, a lot of guys were using it for that. Uh, oh, here's the, let's see, this is, I don't know if I can play this without it blasting all of you. Anyway, I'll let you all watch that on your own, but they've got a whole bunch of stuff on here to check out, Berkeley stuff. Um, let's see. So the one that I saw, and let's actually see if Strike King, oh no, I forgot. Stupid Tack Warehouse website. Love Tack Warehouse. Hate the new website. I'm sorry. Um, let's see. I think it would just be under soft. I don't even know what they would put it as, but it was, it was the old hula grub is essentially what it was. And I saw it on an Instagram thing way back and I was like, oh man, I'm so excited for this. And they're like, oh, you'll love this. If you love the hula grub, I haven't seen anything more of it. So I hope they release it. I'm just a nerd that liked the old hula grubs, I guess. Uh, but there's also, I am sharing, right? Okay. Uh, there's also Kai Tech had one that was on the main screen today when I was getting pictures to do the um, the video thumbnail. So these, so this is kind of a cool one. It's I think yeah, three point two inches, so perfect size. You could put it on a naked jig. So last time when I was talking about uh, like the boss jigs, you can buy naked jig heads. Put this on here. You don't need a skirt or anything because you put the jig head up here. It's got your skirt and trailer all in one. You can do just like a light jig head, you know, like if you would put a swim bait on a, a number of different ways. You could probably even use an EWG, actually. EWG Ned Rig might be pretty badass. Um, but yeah, that's a cool one. Old school right there. That's one that's kind of come back around. Uh, I'm excited for that one. I really want to see the uh, the Strike King one because it's got the Rage Tail thing on it, but I don't know if that one's come out or not. Oh, here's another one. I don't know if this is a new one or not, but the Little Spider. So Twin Tail Grub with your Hula Grub front. Ooh, and they also have the two inch size for a Ned rig. Ho ho. So yeah, I thought those were cool. What do we got going on in chat? What are y'all creeping and talking about in here? Um, let's see. <laughs> Hashtag forward facing sonar. Yeah, I'm not one of the channels that's gonna beat that to death. I mean, we've got enough people going back and forth on that. Ooh, the swamp lord. Yeah, I don't have any of those with me. Chris said he thinks that's gonna be his go-to frog. It is a good frog. I like it. Um, let's see. Oh yeah. The crush city stuff. I put the Bronco bug on there. That was one of them where they, 
you know, they said they ripped it off from some, I don't know if the OSP, Dolive something or Dolive, whatever they are. Um, that was one. Some of those look cool. I know a bunch of other channels have already talked about them, um, but somebody else was asking me the other day about those. Uh, I forget what the Ned rig one was. I think the Burley boys were showing it or something. Somebody asked me. Uh, so if you all don't know, Rapala come out with their own plastics now, which is kind of weird because you don't think plastics when you see Rapala or Rapala. So there's that Bronco bug. It's like a copy of that one deal. They've got their own craw. The thing, the weird thing about craws is like, there's a bunch of good craws on the market. I don't want to say I'm stubborn, but you know, I, I really have just kind of a couple that I go to. You know, Berkeley come out with some good craws. The was a 309 or 409, whatever it is they call it, the patent number. Um, that's just what they named it. It's a number. I like that one. But I mean, you know, the Rage but or the Rage Craw for me is kind of a, a standard. Um, that's the first one to come to mind. But I, there's just so many cool craws out there, and I'm I don't really deviate a ton. This is the one the Burley guys were talking about, and they have like the copper truce. How do I show the color? I don't even know how to show. Oh yeah, you got to do it up here. The uh, the old copper truce like the Z man, and these are a Laztec type, you know, that real stretchy, uh, non breakable material. I don't know what they call it here. Uh, TPE, so some sort of, I guess, like a polyethylene something that makes it. But anyway, they've got their own plastics. There's a swim bait that's pretty good. Um, the freeloader, which actually looks pretty cool for like a jig trailer or vertical jigging, you know, again, forward facing sonar, it's four and a half inch. So some cool stuff from them. Let's see what else I do have a box to undo here. Oh, uncle Mike over at Thunderhawk sent me some stuff, said new an unboxing, check it out. If you like it, you like it. If you don't give it away, no pay, no sponsor or anything. He just sent it and said, tell us what you think. So I'll show you some of these. Mike over at Thunderhawk has been a nice guy to send stuff over to try out. They've got a new one called the Little Bird, five inches. This is purple brown, so like your PB and J. And it's a drop shot lure. And again, this is one of their TPE. That was probably really loud in y'all's ear. Sorry. Um, but they've got the clamshells here. I got to get in. This is again like the TPE, you know, the Elastec y um, durable stuff. So drop shot, you can see how like a very, very soft material. I noticed that when I was looking at them first extremely limp, right? Very, very, very high action. This is going to have any of those plastics, just like when I was messing with my own stuff with the do it stuff. Um, it was crazy how much more action you could get in like a paddle tail with the really soft plastisol. Now it doesn't hold up as well. So they've kind of solved that using this. Um, you know, my, my paddle tails would only last, you know, a couple fish, but they were so soft. You could barely even be moving it and the tail was moving. So kind of interesting to play with, you know, if you're a bait maker playing with the different Types of plastics. I, you can't use this stuff, but the different um, hardness or softness, I guess. So there's that one. And I'll do a couple giveaways tonight. I've got a reel. I found a reel that I never even opened from Okuma. And I've got some other plastics and stuff. So who knows what all we'll get into here. But a bunch of different colors. So they've got a watermelon sparkle, your watermelon red. There is this one I really like. This is probably my favorite color. Watermelon blue pearl. So it's a laminate. With this green, you can barely see that kind of blue teal on the bottom because the craws around here will have that blue kind of tealish belly and claws to it. I'm going to start getting these mixed up here. I'm going to throw a pile. This one I think is going to be a great do-it-all for your bait fish type profile. They call it Manor. Uh, and this one is Green Punk and Pearl. So it's kind of like your, uh, what would they call it, Smalley... Uh, what is that color? Green pumpkin magic, actually. Never mind. Is what they call that color with the greenish. I think just one more of these. Ava Dawn. So that's kind of like your morning dawn, the purpley red, almost like a plum oxblood look to it, which is pretty cool. I don't need that up there on the thing. Let me see here. Uh, oh, yeah, up for pre order. Yeah, sorry. They, those ones from Berkeley weren't live. <clears throat> yeah, negative 10 last night. Yeah, we had. I forget what it was the other night. It got super cold. Oh my God. I was pissing my pants because woke up and it was 61 in the house. And I'm like, uh Oh, my wife's like the furnace isn't working. And I'm like, no, we were just talking to our financial advisor. We had our, our meeting and uh, he's like, yeah, you know, do you need any extra money? Like, do you think any I'm like, yeah, we're, you know, we're saving up for some of this and this, you know, the, the, uh, the furnace is getting older and the water heater. So we're probably gonna have to update up, uh, 
re-update those and then the next morning it's not working. I'm like, oh my gosh. Luckily, I went out and for your furnace, you'll have an exhaust, a uh, intake and a, an exhaust for those outside. And it was just covered with snow and ice. So I, as soon as I undid it, now I could suck air in. It's done that multiple times on ours. They did a crappy job putting that together on our house. But yeah, thank God it started working after that. So what about the Z-Man Gremlin? What's the Z-Man Gremlin? I like the Gremlins. Gremlins 2 is a, such an amazing movie. The elevator scene where they're doing the elevator sound still uh, makes me crack up. Let's see. Am I sharing? I'm not. Z-Man Gremlin. Is that the little swim bait thing? No, that's the Gobius. Is this made up? Is this real? I'm assuming it's a soft bait. Oh, yeah. I got about one pack of those last year. I tried them. Action looked good. It's kind of like your brush hog, um, kind of like a, a, a <clears throat> man bear pig from Reaction Innovations. You know, kind of hopped up on steroids. It's a bigger, yeah, four and a half inch. That's why I really like the man bear pig because it's small. It's finesse. Also, the, um, what is it for Reaction Innovations? The bigger one, the kinky beaver, the one with the tails on it, which I can show you guys these now real quick. Uh, Reaction Innovations is still one of those that kind of flies under the radar. Um, so there's the kinky beaver. It's got the like the twisty kind of things back there. But this is the one I was talking about, their little man bear pig. I think it's three and a half inches, if I remember right. Five inches? That must be undone because that thing is not that big. It's a small profile. Like the plastic and stuff up here is small. That must be when it's outstretched. It's a small profile. Uh, okay, what else? My phone. So Chris, who's kind of south, what, east of me, right? Southwest to me. Says negative eight right now. Yeah, it's, it's chilly. Chilly, chilly. Speaking of Brandon V, there he is. I got a special package for you coming sometime, man. I got to get the rest of the stuff done. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Yep. Kirk said he's already caught some on the Crush Shetty Freeloader. Oh, yeah, as a spinnerbait trailer, too. Yeah, absolutely. would be perfect for that. Paula Hardbaits come with dull hooks. Really? Um, depending on what I'm throwing, I always replace the hooks just because a lot of them, like the Rapalas, I think historically have been kind of um, thinner wire, like on the DTs and stuff. A lot of times I'll, I'll buff those up, but I don't remember them. Strike King has been the one for me that's traditionally come with dull hooks. <clears throat> Oh, the Money Badger. Yeah, I do have a couple of the Money Badgers. I'm actually more excited for the Dime. The Dime looks awesome. I like it a lot. Money Badger, I threw it a little bit, but I hate the ones that I wanted to go shallower are super, super small. So I don't like that. I like the bigger body. Speaking of Uncle Mike, there he is. Mike, thanks for sending the box over. Appreciate that. Um, Let's see. I th think I'm pretty caught up four or five minutes behind. Let's keep going here. So we also sent the tubes. Now this is probably the thing I was most excited for in here, which even funny enough, there's a frog, but these I was really, really excited for because the tube, especially the stupid tube, um, Uncle Gramps, Hella, a number of those guys throwing the stupid tube. This one is Lake, uh, Lake Craw. So this one they caught the stupid uncle it says quote on the back of it. Even your stupid uncle will catch fish with this tube. So that's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the stupid tube is one I want to throw more of golden shiner. I like that one. And again, it's one of those things I always say, this is the dove snot. I really, really like that one. Uh, you know, the, the river guys have never forgotten about the tube. A lot of other people have forgotten about it. That's the bone color. And there's, you know, there's different ways to fish it now. It doesn't have to just be an open hook. And they're showing these. This isn't two colors. It's the top and bottom, in case you're wondering on a lot of these. That's Dove's Gobi, so your Gobi color. There's Pinky. That'll be your walleye tube right there. A bunch of colors of these. This is MN Special, so that's kind of like your smallmouth magic. Uh, what is this one? Like a plum? Oh, yeah, plum. Good guess. There's my other favorite, go figure, June Bug. 
good old purple. And last in here is the black and red. I'm honestly not a black and red fan. Like the Bulls, like their black and red, but for Lures, I'm not a black and red red fan. Um, he did also, now these were for me. I'll probably have to give at least one of these away, but he knows my favorite color in the A10 is the Ice Tequila. So he sent a couple of the big ones and small ones for me. I appreciate that, Mike. That color is awesome sauce. Works well around here, too. Had a couple videos fishing that exact one. And then their frogs, they released a new frog. So this was the frog they did with um, Mikey. And there's a whole story about it on back. You can check it out. But kind of looks like the scum frog. So I don't know if Mike uses uh, They've got their own design stuff, factory or whatever. So I don't think it's the same blank. But very similar. I notice it doesn't have the you know hole and stuff in the butt. It does have a flat weight back here, though. And that's something if I were a frog maker, I would definitely play with that more. So it's a flat, so it's not round, doesn't stick out. It's a flat, kind of longer weight. So it's probably going to sit head down a little bit more like this. They did shrink wrap the hook there. So water's not going to get up in there as much. Hooks are nice and super sharp on them. I did test that, and that's a big thing for me. And the body's really soft, and you can tell just from barely even touching it. Now, my only critique with these would be, I do like how they're weedless, so you can see the hooks ride right up on the body. One thing that I've looked at with frogs is when they turn, which it does, the ability for that to turn when they're shaking and that to get out of the way. I've talked about that a ton, something I've not heard people talk about. When, when I see people catching them, that's always a big thing I look at. Um, my only thing would be your hookup area here. So there's not a ton there. So these are probably going to be ones I'm going to bend the hooks up on more often than not, just to give me a little bit more bite. Hooks already are pointed up a little bit, but that would be my only thing. So there's the black and blue. like those. Good look to them. I think he said there's also one that's Hawkeye that's supposed to be black and gold. He didn't have it yet, but that will for sure be my favorite. This color is frog brown. They've got your good sunny clear water. That is silver shad. That's going to give off all kinds of reflection. Your regular old yep, green frog. And some of these do have designs on the... Oops. Oh, that was probably super loud. Some of these do have designs on the bottom, too. I'm not going to take them all out. Bone, that one has... I like even if there's just a little bit of something to break up the color on the bottom instead of just a flat. They've got your good perch color here. Thundergill. Look at that one. That's all sorts of glittered out. Whew. Bling to the nth degree. That one I already showed, right? Silver Shed. Yeah, I showed that one. I think this is the last one. Black and red. So like your Amazon frog, this will be your early spring throwing a red frog like that. I never get on that early red frog bite. I think that was all of them, right? Um, but I know a lot of people that do. Yeah, so cool little frogs. So thank you, Mike. I'll throw some of these in the giveaway tonight for people. Always appreciate you doing that. Everybody out there, I think Mike is still on. Let us know what's your what was your favorite one out of that. Some cool ones. I'm, I think the tube. I think the tube I'm the most excited for. And again, that's nothing, you know, groundbreaking or anything. It's just one that they did. But fishing with Dustin uh, on the Mississippi, he was throwing a text string tube. Like I said, the number of people throwing, you know, stupid tubes, number of different ways you can do it. But this isn't, you know, this isn't any special, you know, tube or anything. They just made a good tube. And I want to throw it more. So I might be kind of simple, but again, one of those lures kind of coming back around that I want to try. I want to catch more fish on. So that's my favorite. Uh, let's see. Yep. People talking about creature baits. Uh, outside of chatter baits, never really got into Z-Man. Yeah, I like Z-Man. I mean, they're TRD. I actually like the bigger TRDs lately, the, the big TRD, whatever they call it. Um. Oh, is that why, Little Rich? Funny enough, I was just wondering. I went to, I was looking on, was it Omni or was it Tack Warehouse? Somewhere somebody had sent me said, ooh, here's some good deals. Um, I don't know if it was here or not. But everything was like marked down. Oh, yeah, the reels were here. Was it the lures too? Yeah, everything's on clearance. So I don't know. That's a good call. I didn't know they bought them out. But I noticed everything was on clearance. Like, look, 50, 60% off. 
So if y'all are looking for 13 stuff, the dual pitch walking bait's a great walking bait. Of course, that's only 16% off. Um, I really like their their square bill. Really, really nice. The dead shad one they have. Uh, not epic shad. They call it, I think it's dead shad. Oh, regurgitated shad. With those eyes, oh my gosh. Brendan still never pulled through and got me the eyes from his eye guy. Uh, and then plastics. You know, they've got a bunch of different plastics. So you can check them out. So yeah, that's interesting, Little Rich. I don't know. I do not know what will happen with that. I wasn't aware. Um, let's see. Hey, everybody's saying, hey, still talking about weather. I know this damn snow. Um, ooh, damn, Western Iowa, negative 13 with minus 39 wind chill. Ooh, yikes. Uh, let's see. Yeah, good call, Cisco. Thinner hooks for winter. Yeah, the fish's mouth is harder. Ooh, Chris, let me know what you think of that lose uh, oil and grease. Yeah, actually, now that you say that, Cooler Lid, I do have a couple couple uh rapala jerk baits for that too the huskies i think were pretty crap now that now that you say that um let's see good looking tubes where's the buzzard snot because <laughs> it was dove snot speaking of dustin there he is what'd you think of those tubes dustin dustin uh, he can't talk he's got his own special custom tubes that he gets so uh, that pick on these looks a lot like you, Debo. The frog, Mikey, doesn't look like me. I'm not sure what you mean. Oh, see, and here we go. An old, old lure. Scott says he's never even thrown a tube. That's all right. No need to shake your head. Everybody's got favorites. Uh, tubes work well on weedless Ned heads. Mm, mm, I've never tried that. Interesting. Can't go wrong with Gamagatsu owner BKK hooks. Yeah, I've not tried the BKK. They must be newer. I'm not sure who makes them. I haven't looked into them. But yeah, Gamagatsu's Mustad and owner, I think, are probably the top three of the heap for me anyway. VMC has the new red lines, but they're super expensive. They're really nice. Oh, actually, and I got to give credit where it's due. Berkeley hooks are really good. The... Uh, forget what they're called. I talked crap about them early. I said they felt like they were going to be too small a wire, but I have not had one fail on any of my Berkeley stuff. So as far as break, I mean, you know, I've doled them out from using them and stuff like on the Fritz side and such, but yeah, what are those? The Berkeley? I don't remember. Anyway. Yeah. They're good hooks. A tins, great bait. I agree. Excellent bait. And it reminds me of, I've talked about that one before. It reminds me of the uh, the old lazy Ike, kind of a lazy Ike look where it's all integrated in the lure. That's what I think is cool about these. Right when they first came out, that was exactly what I thought. Um, great coming over brush. You see how the bill's designed in there. So when you're fishing it tied to the uh, line tie here, coming like this, coming up and over brush. And Mike even said when he was on before, they designed it so all that's covered and under it. So when it comes up and over it, your hook is just barely touching. So it's not out, you know, in front of the bill or anything like that. So pretty cool. I do like the A-10. So many good crankbaits out there too. You know, as a fishing company, it would be hard to, you know, you see so many people talking about, well, that's, you know, that's an old this or this company makes that. Or, you know, there's, look at the worms. You know, how many times can you redo a worm and make your own, you know? It's tough. It would be a tough thing to get into because you're always going to have critics. I got that stuck in the package. You're always going to have critics. You're always going to have people saying, oh, you know, it looks like, so I don't know, not, not something I would want to do is be a lure designer. Colors and stuff, sure, but to actually design it, that'd be, that'd be a lot of weight on your shoulders. Uh, let's see. Ohio go blue. What's the girls score? Iowa girls I was watching before. It was tied playing uh, the Hoosiers tonight. Gramps isn't on. He must be watching them play. Tebow finds all the coolest frogs. I do love frogs. I will definitely be throwing that one. 
I want the black and yellow though. Question. Okay, we got to get to my stuff too. So I'm going to say, I'm going to start this one. I'm going to open this one up. And if you guys have any questions, Mike was in here. I don't know if he still is. Um, but if you have any questions for Mike Thunderhawk, nice guy. Like I said, not sponsored by anything. He doesn't pay me to do that. Just sends it over and says, see what you think. Share it with your fusion friends. Um, what is going to be your lure or technique? So I said the two, but I've got another one. So I want to see what you all, what's going to be one lure that or, or rig that you want to work on this year? I always make a, ever since I've got back into fishing, every year I try to make it a point to get better with something. Actually, here's one real quick, Bass with Big Moan. I'll get back to your question, Patrick. But this is when I had talked about it a long time ago. Well, I wouldn't say a long time ago. A number of videos back, I was doing a unboxing. I said I couldn't find these, that I got some of these from Picasso. So Jim, Tackle Junkie, told me about these. Chris, funny enough, Chris Russ um, had also said that he had got some of these and really liked the uh, head. I forget what the, they sell just the swim bait head. And then also this little single barrel underspin. Well, when you get the one together, it gives you the normal one. So the one that's put together like that. And they give you an extra. So the cool thing about these is it's this rubbery stuff that you can slip over any jig head. Hooks are super good. Picasso is usually a little bit more expensive, but um, all their stuff has been really, really solid. Always super duper sticky hooks. But there you go. So it comes with this. So this is what I know I had talked about a while back. And unlike the flashy swimmer where it's got the metal stuff down here, the flashy swimmer tends to break off for me, which is okay. They sell replacements and I don't expect it to be perfect. Um, but this one, you're not going to have to worry about that as much. Now, I don't know how much it takes to pull that barrel swivel out of there. But the reason I think this package is cool is because you get that and an extra. So in case it breaks off, they give you that. Or if you already had a jig head that you liked, I don't even know. And you can buy these separate. So if you had a jig head that you liked or even like a chatterbait, which I'll talk about here, you could try putting this on a chatterbait or, you know, a little um, like a paddle tail. Not like this, but this is actually a top spin. But just pretend you had just this top part on it. You could make your own underspin, you know, with like a some paddle tail that you like. So, yeah, just kind of a cool thing out there. I think it's neat when they kind of give you some options. If you had the Picasso, what do they call it? Single barrel underspin. I got the quarter ounce. And I also like that they come in different hook and weight sizes. So like the quarter ounce doesn't just come in a four aught. I think they have like a three and a two aught. I like when companies do that and give you give you some options. Um, Patrick, is it possible to reach a point where you don't feel like it's necessary to buy more rods, reels, and lures? I think I might be there. Absolutely, dude. Yeah, if I didn't do YouTube, I would have a tiny fraction of what I have now. I mean, you all supporting me, watching the videos, you know, donations, all that stuff keeps me going to do this stuff. Um, and I'm a huge gear nerd. So I would, I, I'm not going to say I wouldn't be getting new stuff. I would definitely still get new stuff to try, but I would be trading in my old stuff. I wouldn't have, you know, the stuff I do um, nowhere near the gear. So yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think I could be pretty good and not need any more with like, six combos probably to be honest there are certain ones that i like to have like completely ready like a jerk bait now i like to have my own separate jerk bait combo where i don't ever have to take it off that works for top water too um but you know combos like that frog combo i'd have my own dedicated frog combo that i would never mess with but yeah you don't need a crap ton of stuff you know to be honest how many times do i go with my backpack i've got my giant backpack here and i end up throwing two lures for the whole day right so but that's the fun of it. That's the fun of fishing is trying new stuff and buying new things and testing out. You know, could I easily just go out with, you know, a thing of worms and sit there and catch fish? Sure, but that's boring to me. I don't want to just sit there I like trying stuff. Okay, where else are we at? Let me know for your. Oh, there's Gramps. I wish I could have a thing where like a live, uh, like have a. Let's see. I do like how they give you different options here for layouts. I wish I could do one like that while the game's going with like the game playing here. I guess I could for live updates, but you probably all don't want to watch that, do you? Oh, that's kind of cool. That one. Hmm. Anyway, squirrel. Sorry, I got. Uh... How are you going to rig those tubes weedless? Yeah, I don't have a weedless. Uh... I know I've got some somewhere. Actually, didn't I just do a video? I might have one behind me and I can show you guys. Hold on. Uh, let's see. Because I'm already getting behind in comments. I'm 10 minutes behind, which is not bad. 
Again, I'll be doing a couple disc or a uh, couple. Somebody said I got some good lures on discount. I'll say I'm going to do a couple discounts tonight. I'm going to do a couple giveaways tonight. I've got a real. Actually, I can show those real quick. Akuma. I had ended up buying a Simar. It's one of their more budget spinning reels. I used it for a season and I liked it. Didn't have any issues with mine, but it's more of a budget. This is a 3000 size or the 30 size for them. 300 size in some companies. I don't know why all those are different. That's something that should all be the same. But yeah. Nice little spinning reel. Oops, I don't have it tight. Uh, nice little spinning reel there for you. Meow. That's always the test, right? You got to spin it. Does it spin well? Then you know it's going to be an amazing reel. Um, so I got that. I've also got a Lucky shirt. That was from an unboxing a long time ago from, I forget what they were, what their name was, but I don't think they're in business anymore. Looney Squared. They sent me the hat. The hat's awesome. I would wear the shirt, but now that I'm a little bit more portly than I used to be, I wear an extra large. So it's your lucky fishing shirt. It's a large. Old, old tubby Debo doesn't wear larges anymore. He needs an extra large. This is an extra large, but it's like a Nike fit, so it's tight. Makes me look muscular. I don't have muscles anymore, so need all the help I can get. But I've got that, and then I've got a random bag of lures. I was just throwing some random stuff in here. Should be, uh, should be a couple good ones. So whoever is a large... Either the reel or the lures, I'll throw in a shirt for you. Pretty cool shirt. I'm only using top water in 2024. I wish I could only fish frogs all year. <laughs> oh, man. The credge. How do I identify every person you know sponsored by Berkeley? That's harsh. I, th I thought it kind of looked like the flying lure. I thought it was kind of neat. The old backwards walk to it. Have I tried the Thunderhawk jerk baits? I don't know. That's funny because Mike Mike sent me one jerk bait a while back and it was a pink one. <laughs> I think he did end up sending me a couple more later, but uh I have not thrown it. That's that's one I have not tried yet. If he did send me a couple more. Really, it's been the A10s. Their little camel crawls are nice. Um, good jig trailer. I like the mini ones better for finesse jigs. Um, the A10. The Papa Waka was cool. Didn't catch any fish. Well, I can't take that back. I caught two dinks. That was on a video a while back. Um, swim baits are good. I've had lots of follows on his swim bait. Never caught anything on him, though. But yeah, A10. A10's been my big one. JT Debo, I messaged you earlier. Carl's Fishing and Outdoor has an extra 30% off already clearance. That's pretty good. I haven't been on Carl's for a long time. I honestly don't go over there. I don't really think of them. Everett, yes, we talked about that. That was the Credge. Uh, hit up Gramps. He'll, he would love to talk to you about that. Fishing with Gramps. Oh, Cooler Lid. See, these are like, these are the uh, the comments that keep me going. Anybody that says that I'm cool and would just be a fun guy to talk fishing and, and have a dad pop with, that's the ultimate Ultimate comp. Oh, yeah, the Fusion 19s. Thanks, Gators. Fusion 19 or Berkeley's hooks. Yeah, I talked crap about them when I first seen them, and I was wrong. So, or when I first saw them, I tend to use seen, which is what past had seen, past tense, and present tense. I'm not an English major. Cut me some slack. Uh, yeah, they're on the stunners, really sharp. Yep. Hawks up by six at half. Great game. Yeah, damn it. I was watching before. It's going to be a really good game. I bought the frogs that Soakup made. I don't know. Is that a company? I've not heard of those. Oh, no. Or is that the, the Fisher guy? John Soakup, right? Now that I say that. I don't know him. Somebody just had him on a live. Uh, I was watching a little bit. I've, I don't know anything about him. I don't keep up with a lot of the pros. I'm kind of bad at that. I like watching the pros. I like watching pro fishing and stuff. I just don't keep up with enough of the people. Uh, medium cranks. Okay, so we're getting into some of it here. So medium cranks, pike and tackle said medium cranks from the bank and spinner baits. I like it. Uh, a glide bait. 23 was my drop shot year. Malone, we know every year's drop shot year. We know you love the drop shots, so. It's okay. Crankbaits are on my radar for Andy. That yellow green frog looks juicy. So that was probably the Thunderhawk back then. 
I was talking about Goldeneye, dude. The the music on Goldeneye used to hit so hard back in the day. Blood on the screen when you die. Surface walking baits, yes. Oh, subsurface dog walking. Hmm. What do they call those twitch baits or whatever, like the saltwater ones? I like to fish the tube and chatter baits. Let's talk about that. So some of the lures uh, that I think have been kind of interesting coming into kind of the, I guess, end of last year through last year. I grabbed some here. So the one that I talked about, Chad Shed, I think that's going to be another big one this year. I think that's going to be a hit for a while. He did such a good job with his own his own baits that he made that I think that was just a great transition for him. So one that I want to play with more, if you watched on one of my Monster Bass videos, I showed the Yamatanuki. Lots of talk and crap about the my bracelet. My daughter made me hot colors, huh? Thanks, honey. Um, but the Yamatanuki, this is what I want to throw more. You throw it weightless, it's three-fourths of an ounce. So it sinks fast, it's heavy. But I was throwing it in cold water, so especially early this spring, I want to try it more. It's like an even more finesse version of a jig, kind of, is the way to think about it. Could you throw Ned Rig and all this other stuff? Sure. You know, they float kind of a different look. This, you're just hopping this on the bottom, and when you look at the underwater footage, it's neat because it'll kind of jerk, jerk, jerk like a little bait fish, and then just sink. So it's one that I want to throw more. Again, as a weightless lure, you can rig it weedless for bank fishing. Always something that I'm looking for. And if you want to dazzle it up a little bit, you can add some skirting to it too, just to kind of give it a, a different look. So that's one that I want to play with more. I got the Bomba, which is from Missile Baits. Haven't thrown it yet. I also got the Spro ones, which I think I showed those a while back. Haven't thrown these either, but I'm not real impressed with like a lot of the other poop baits. Chris Russ actually got me the first, the Depths ones. These are the Spro ones. So this looks like just like a crawfish with its claws ripped off. Will it be good? I don't know. I'm going to try them. Three and a half inch. I don't know how much these weigh. They're pretty hefty. It's a, it's a big turd. But yeah, kind of. I think kind of an interesting category. I know it seems like there's a lot of stuff out there about it because it's new and it's, oh, it's poop. It's going to get, you know, views and all this crap. But I try to look at it, you know, in a more realistic look and see where will it fit in. And, and for me, especially being able to rig these weedless as a bank angler, now, could you use a jig? Could you use something else? Yeah, sure. But again, we get into talking about, have the fish seen it before? Is it something just a little different? I'm down to try it. Now, does it always make a huge difference? No. Oh, I just looked. It's negative eight here, it says, in Cedar Rapids. So that's cool as a ball, though. Found some of these. Found some of my 10-inch ones. One that's always going to work. Tequila Sunrise Worm. Dad and his buddy Joe threw these back in the day, taught me how to fish them. They're one that's caught lots and lots of fish. Okay, so a new one to the market, the Evo. So this came out late last year. I want to know if y'all have tried it and what are your thoughts on it? I want to do some more testing with this. I thought it was pretty damn, uh, what's the word, consistent. So it started up well, ran well. People were saying, oh, it doesn't have as good of a vibration as a jackhammer, this, that, and the other. I mean, honestly, I don't know that I can tell a crazy difference. Um. Jackhammer is damn good. I mean, that's that's for sure. I'm trying to get this off here without poking my finger. They've got the shrink tubing on the hook. But looking at this, I think it's got a good, you know, good hook keeper. I've I've showed it before, but it's got the weight back, the uh, lead back here. It's got the wire one there. Good super sharp hook on it. A little bit different head style. They did kind of gussy up the head a little bit, made it a little bit prettier. You know, added some stuff to it, but. Still pretty similar. And I think for only nine bucks, you know, especially if you can find these on sale, I think that's what they are, right? Nine dollars. Um, I think it's a really good alternative instead of paying, you know, what, 16 bucks for a jackhammer. Not to say that it's not worth it. I mean, they're good, but uh, chatterbaits seem to be something that I lose all the time. So instead of donating, well, that's kind of a cool view. There we go. I had to find the right button. My stuff got mixed around. Um, yeah, I think it just kind of is a different, slightly different sound maybe to it. Not as heart thumping maybe as people have said. I can see that. But I am not a, uh, I'm not a jig connoisseur, so I can't exactly tell you the exact 
What am I doing here? Is this, am I in? Oh my God, my computer's behind. There we go, Bates. Uh, so, you know, so I can't tell you the exact frequency difference of this versus, uh, Chatterbait Customs must be going away. Those were a Tackle Warehouse exclusive. I always like those. Shorter shank hook. I think they were a great buy. I used to be able to get them for like four bucks on sale when they do those sales. Um, anyway, Evo, yeah, $9.99. What's a jackhammer? 15 to 17. So you're saving a little bit. If you're not a tournament angler, you know, maybe you kind of gravitate toward these more. Okay, what else do we got? Oh, I was going to talk about some trailers. So there's been, uh, I don't know who's saying this stuff about, multiple people have told me, do you still use a, a paddle tail? So-and-so was saying you don't use a paddle tail. This happens to be one, this is one of the small arsenals little three i want to see a yeah, three inch the thing with paddle tails is i think people put too big of a paddle tail on paddle tails look awesome this is like a little three inch three and a half inch is my favorite but just to kind of show you something like that where you've got just a subtle and that actually might be a little bit too small um something where you've got just a little subtle kick to it you could throw these if you wanted something different this is the mini d chunk from missile baits awesome little finesse jig trailer looks cool on the back of a um vibrating jig these are another good one the kamikaze is it swim on yeah swim on so if you've not seen these and they actually have like a little double twin tail for spinner baits which i was really excited about i didn't grab any of those but um i know that was one people were like who cares about that and i was like oh that's again one of those old ones we used to throw the little v tails on spinner baits back in the day dad and i uh, but there is with that swim on on it I'm not trying to give you all the finger, sorry. But that's what that would look like. And I always bite just a little bit off the tip of it. The plastic, that is. Um, let's see. What else did I have? Oh, another. I've shown this. I did this on my, my lure hack before. I think that was on the Monster Bass channel. I did that for them. Uh, taking a beaver. If you have a beaver bait cutting it just down the middle and using that half, half of this as a chatterbait trailer works amazing. If you've never tried it, great little hack. So again, when we're talking about carrying less stuff, if you've got a moving bait, you're flipping one of these around, you can take just this and use these as your chatterbait trailers too. Um, so the other one I wanted to show Chris, uh, the last time we had fished had brought me some of these. Hopefully Chris, did I trade you something for these? Hopefully. Let me know if I didn't. I owe you. Um, anyway, this is, well, I shouldn't have thrown the package away there, didn't it? This is the one from Bass Pro Shops. I have not, I didn't throw it, but they have their own Chatterbait, the XPS, by Z-Man. So it's a collab between Bass Pro and Z-Man. They've made their own. Looks similar to the Evo. So it's got the big eyes, which I really like. I'm a big fan of, and you seem to see it in the saltwater stuff more, but I'm a big fan on like swim jigs. Um, you know, like paddle tail heads like these, like having real big eyes. I think it's it makes a great target for the fish to hit because they're always going to eat. I shouldn't say always, but, you know, mainly are going to try to eat head first. So that's what that one looks like, more of a rounded head. It is direct connect, which is that Z-Man patent. And then instead of having the, you know, the fancy stuff back here, like the Evo, it's just got your double, which is still good, your double lead um, keeper. Hook is nice and sharp. It is a little bit larger hook. Is that a four out or a five out? I want to say this was a five out on this one. Yeah. Uh, heavy duty five out doesn't say what it is, but yeah. So anyway, kind of a, a cool deal there. Kind of two new ones after we hadn't seen really any new, you know, crazy stuff from the Z-Man Chatterbait. Now they're, now they're busting out all kinds of them, huh? So I don't know. What do you all think? Better, worse than the jackhammer, doesn't matter. You're still throwing the original. Options are good. I like having options. Oh, and this one I found in the uh, the thing next to me, but good worthy mention, talking about spinnerbaits coming back. I think one of the best value spinnerbaits on the market now, Strike King. I think these are still $7. They might have raised the price because it seems like everything has gone up. Why do I keep clicking that one? Because uh, it seems like everything has gone up, unfortunately. I did click share, right? Oh, yeah. 
Um, but yeah, so this is a wire tied. It's whoops, that was jigs. Also the Thunder Cricket. I think their Thunder Cricket kind of goes under the radar too. Uh, let's see, it's tournament something. Yeah, tournament grade compact. Yeah, so $7.99. They've got some of them on sale for $7.59. Uh, but great little spinner bait. I like it that it's a little bit more compact. Uh, a little bit more compact style. This would be great to throw spring if you've never thrown post-spawn a um, bluegill colored spinnerbait with some chartreuse on it, try it because bass hate it and they will crush it. But yeah, wire tied. I don't know that that's going to show through here. Maybe. Yeah. Wire tied. So it's not a rubber band that's going to break on you. It's got a good plastic keeper on it. Some of them don't even keep, you know, have plastic keepers. I kind of go back and forth if I use it or not, but a good compact little spinnerbait. So that's one I know I've, I've mentioned a couple times, but that happened to me in the pile here next to me when I was looking for my chatterbait thing. Um, I think that was all of those I wanted to talk about. So let me get back here and check. Okay, so Grant says he's going to play with glides more. Man, I am just not, I don't love the glide game. I'm. It's not something that I love to do. I mean, it's really cool when you see the big ones follow up, but I would, I don't know. I guess I'm kind of a dork that I would rather go out and catch a bunch of two and I'd rather catch 10, 20, two and a half pounders, two pounders, whatever then catch one six pounder on the day. I like, I like constant action. Maybe I'm a dork favorite frog combo. Hmm, damn. I don't know. I get like these. I have to think on because I would say, I would probably say right now, my favorite reel for frogging is the Tatula 200, uh, aluminum frame, aluminum handle side, I mean, I actually broke, I stripped, I set the, the hook so hard that the reel, everything held good, but I bent the handle and popped the retaining screw off. That's how solid those things are. Um, and you're saying, well, it still broke. Yeah, but you know how many, I've broke a number of other reels setting the, the hook hard. And I'm not, you know, I'm not some big, huge muscle man, but uh, yeah, like graphite frame, graphite side plate. They just don't hold up as well. Now, for certain things, you know, for top water, for treble hooks where you don't have the drag cranked all the way down. But as far as rod, man, I've said it before. You don't need a crazy expensive rod to go frogging. The Abu Vendetta, whatever the old black and red ones were, used to be able to get at Walmart. That was my first one. 7.4 heavy. Awesome frog rod for like, what were those? 60 bucks, I think. 69 bucks. Oh, uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah, Gator, that's kind of the, the cool and bad part about it. Uh, yeah, and that's, Julie, I mean, that's kind of the thing of fishing. How many fishing people do you know that love to collect and buy lures and, and test stuff just as much as catching fish? Like, it's 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 all, like, own separate hobby. You have people who just collect lures, like, not even to fish, you know, old stuff. It's kind of a whole different deal to it. Jermaine in the house. What's up, Jermaine? Uh, t rig -a tube. Yep. Dustin kicked my butt with that with his custom tubes out there. Uh, people talking about the Simar. Yes, I will do uh, the Simar giveaway here in a little bit. Portly. Yes, Hook Life. I am a little bit portly now. Put on a little bit, a little bit too much weight. <laughs> been looking dude i haven't worked out i it's it's embarrassing i, I probably can't even do 10 push-ups anymore you have to have to bang those I, I think back to the days like when we trained mma and it was the caliber of people that we were training with because like we were training with absolute monsters and i used to look at myself and think you know i'm in okay shape but looking back on it now i was in fantastic shape amazing we would do like two and a half three hour training sessions at night and we would like at the end of the night, it would look like somebody just threw buckets of water on the mats. It was insane. And now I look at it and I'm like, yep, I can't even uh, do 10 push-ups. So I got to get back to the get. Gramps, you've been doing a great job. I like seeing your posts on that. Get your butt out and just move. What's the old saying for runners, which I hate running. I'd rather get beat with bamboo sticks than run. Um, unless I'm playing basketball, which is funny because you don't think about it then, but, uh, like the old runners will say, 
there was a guy that wrote a book on it. He said, I didn't get old because I stopped running or no. I, okay. Hold on. I didn't stop running because I got old. I got old because I stopped running. Right. So move it or lose it. Kind of the thing with the body. So body that is in motion stays in motion type deal. Uh, let's see. No people talking back and forth. Uh, no, get better. Jermaine, were you sick? Somebody said, Jermaine, get better. Jermaine must've been sick. Uh, man, you all are talking back and forth in here. 279 people in here watching, get more likes. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. It's free. If you like the show, give it a thumbs up. If you don't go watch somebody else, that's okay. I always say YouTube and, and people that you watch is like, uh, like music. You can like and dislike people, but there's no use of Going on and bad mouthing people. Just go watch somebody else. Uh, so Kirk says he'll be trying the missile baits bomba. Uh, do you make? Do they make the poop baits in Ned sizes? Actually, the Yama Tanuki they do. Um, I wasn't really as interested in that one. I don't know how much it weighs, but this one, the Yama Tanuki, without the skirting, I put the skirt on there. They make a smaller version of this. But, you know, if we're getting that small, there's other Ned Rig stuff that I would rather throw. The big the big draw to me of this one is it's th three quarters ounce that you can throw weightless. So. Uh, Bulls are beating the Spurs right now. I didn't know the Bulls played tonight. I was focused on watching the girls play, the Hawk girls. Bulls are middle of the pack. You know what? DeMar DeRozan, I know we're kind of getting off topic here, but DeMar DeRozan, I'm really sad I didn't appreciate him. Also, his nickname's Debo. Uh, but I didn't really, like, follow him, you know, when he played with uh, the Raptors. I didn't really – him and Lowry, you know, they were the big two over there, but I didn't really care. Dude, DeMar is a stud. I love him. Uh, Evo with chatter spike. People saying uh, discount tackle has the price. Somebody else said discount tackle. I think they have a deal with Z Man where they get like, they do a special, or I shouldn't say a special. Theirs are always a little bit lower price than everybody else's. What are we at? Almost an hour. Here, a little bit after the hour, we'll do the first giveaway. I've got a couple going on here. Uh, people talking about chatterbaits, lots of chatterbait love. Yeah. And that's kind of why I go back to the spinnerbait. That was the reason I got this out was as one of those lures that come back around like a tequila sunrise worm, you know, spinnerbaits, I feel like they're still just as good. And I think the reason is because so many people throw chatterbaits now and chatterbaits still catch them, you know? Um, but I would, I would certainly say, don't be afraid to throw the spinnerbait. It is still a solid catcher. Uh, what else? Ollies. We don't have any Ollies around here, Randy. Eight bucks a while back. I cleaned them out. <laughs> yeah. Somebody, was that Nick? Somebody sent me some, uh, Havoc pit bosses. <clears throat> they got for Ollies for like a buck 99. Plastic worms make a great trailer. Yes. Mr. William tracks on the house. What's up? Found them on sale at Dick's Sporting Goods. I haven't been to Dick's or shopped over there for it's on the other side of town. I don't ever go over there. Uh-oh, Clark's on fire running away with it. Man, she is just, she's she's what got me into watching Hawkeye women's basketball. And even after she goes, I'll still keep up with them. But yeah, it's crazy how many people she's turned on to, especially around here in Iowa, girls athletics. I'll be honest, I didn't watch girls basketball before then. They got a fun team. And the cool thing about Hawkeye coaches and stuff, Lisa bluter has been here for I don't know how long. You look at Fran. Fran just beat the, actually tied <clears throat> Tom Davis's winning number of games. So they're the most, the most winningest basketball coaches. You look at Ferentz. I think it's awesome that they're, uh, you know, a long time we believe in you coach type thing instead of churning and burning every two years. Hashtag Tackle Warehouse. Joshua Simonson already trying to get in to get that win. Thunder Cricket. Thunder Cricket squeaks underwater. Hmm. I wonder if it's because the Thunder Cricket, I noticed, is the only one that has that pivoting 
thing inside the head. All the others are fixed. The Thunder Cricket, this piece here in the nose where it's in the nose, this this piece here, this round piece, actually moves up and down the head. It's like jointed, segmented. What would you call that? <clears throat> Do you like an orange blade on a spinnerbait? So a kicker blade. I have only experimented with that a little bit. I've actually got a bunch of the Nichols Pulsators that I got with those bright orange kicker blades. Um, Booyah also makes some I've got. I don't know. There's guys that swear by and dirty water. I don't think it's a, a, a bad idea at all. Uh, you know, it gives them that bright orange, you know, spot thing to hone in on. There's guys that swear by it to say, if you don't have it, you're not catching them at certain times. So I'm, I'm a guy that will pitch around a, a spinner bait all day just because I love throwing them. So I'm probably not the right guy to ask. Cause I'd be like, well, yes, spinner bait's a good option no matter what. So Multiple people commenting on that. Yeah, things come out and I don't really think about it. So, giggity. <clears throat> there you go. Not a bot. Cover me on that. Thank you. Um, let's see. 7-3 Mag Heavy Dobbin Sierra. I need to watch that. I think Hella just had uh, Gary on again. Those are great lives to watch. Gary Dobbins uh, when Hella has him on. He seems like a really cool down-to-earth dude. Oh, yeah. Socap has a new bait company, Save More. Okay. I've not heard, heard of them. Are they on Tackle Warehouse? Somebody was saying they got the new frog by him. Was that Gramps, I think? What was it? Save More? <laughs> that <laughs> sounds like a budget grocery store. I went over to Save More and got all my groceries for the week. Yeah. Socap's definitely not going to be sending me free lures after that comment. Save more. Is this it? No. Save face. <laughs> a windshield or a goggle shield for your wind. Hmm. Yeah, he must have his own website or something or not on here. Maybe somebody else carries them, but I've not heard of those. Um, okay, let's get let's get the first giveaway going here. Let's do let's do the uh, let's do the Simar. 30 size Simar, 300 size, 3000 size, depends on what company it is, but it's your middle 3000 size. That's usually the size I like the best. Good kind of little budget spinning reel here. And guess what? It's right or left handed, so I don't have to ask. Um, so let's do. Share, whoops, not Tackle Warehouse, share, hashtag Simar, Samar, Simar, I don't know how they pronounce it, but, okay, let's see, let's keep going here, so if you want to enter to win the spinning reel, that's it, and if you win in your large, I'll throw in that cool lucky fishing shirt from those guys. I got a cash and element. Cash and rods are again kind of one of those that I feel like they're one of those companies that kind of goes under the radar a lot. I don't feel like they do a ton of like marketing and stuff. Ooh, you can pick up the old Abu Garcia of Vengeance for 60 bucks. What are the black and red ones? It was the old black and red ones that I really liked. And I'm pretty sure they made that one in a 7-4. We'll come back to this, to the Simar. Um, but I'm going to switch over to the warehouse of tackles. Uh, but I'm pretty sure. So it was the, is that Vengeance? Nope. That might be the new one. Uh... I'm pretty sure it was the Vengeance. That must be the new version, but they were the old, like, black, or wait, was it Vendetta? It was Vendettas. That's what it was. It was the old Vendettas. They were not $90 then. You could definitely get them cheaper. It was a 7.4 Heavy. I swear that's what they were. Yeah, I would check, but if you find those, maybe it was a 7.3 Heavy. Either way, great budget rod. They weren't anywhere near that at Walmart when you used to be able to get them. Uh, let's see. Yes, Ben, that is my biggest resolution. So besides um, baits and lures and this and that, like I just want to fish more this year. Last year was the least I've fished for I don't know how long. 
uh, and it sucked. So, people talking about their weather. Yeah, a lot of us are getting hit with crap weather. Welcome back. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Victor asked if the poop baits smell real. Luckily, they don't have a uh, poop scent smell to them. Okay, hashtag Simar if you would like to be entered for the Simar spinning reel that I got. And then I'll also do a, a random baits. I'll show you the baits. I just, I don't even have them already. So it's going to be a bunch of random lures and such. Welcome to Debo Sports Talk. Hey, sometimes I got to gif on tangents. If you don't like that, then. Sorry, we got to do tangents sometimes. Jermaine said spinner baits are still money. Damn right they are. Time for a Gander Mountain reference. <laughs> uh, let's see. Do I have any other fun Gander stories I haven't told you all about? Uh-oh, stubby dog come busting through his nose in the door. Come on, come on, boy. Come on, you old, you old faithful hound. Come hang out with me. How's the stubby dog? I don't know. I don't know of any good uh, any good gander story that I've already told. I'll have to think on it. What's a good bank beater bait caster? Say that five times fast. Ben, Ben's bank beater bait caster. Depends on, uh, depends on what you're looking for, I guess, man. Lose LFS, the $100 is a great one. Shimano SLX are probably the two, I think, top of the heap at 99 bucks. Aluminum frames, they'll last you. Oh, fishing fix. Man, I actually just had to have one not, not long ago, too, for my eye. So, thoughts and prayers out to you, man. Hope everything does go okay. Those are always scary. Hopefully, it's, it's nothing. Grubs, yeah. AZ Scout, absolutely, man. Old school grubs. Dude, that, that's got to be one of the top three best fish catchers ever made. A little, like... Three inch grub, you catch everything on it. <laughs> I love basketball trivia. <laughs> Y'all didn't like the Iowa Iowa talk there. Come on, it's not that bad. Um, let's see. Okay, we're at one twenty six. We got to get one thirty. Get one thirty in here, and I'll draw. And then we'll do the lure one here. I'll get through some more comments and stuff. Then we'll do a. A good lure giveaway. Oh, and both of you will get stickers. I've still got a few stickers left. <laughs> I love people. <laughs> we had Okuma, Caitlin Clark, hashtag Caitlin Clark, hashtag save more. <laughs> oh, you guys kill me. The comments are are the real, the real fun on the lives, not even me. <clears throat> Yeah, the 13, that's uh, that's really interesting. Um, I'll have to see if I can find out what's happening. 13 or Origin A, good bank beater reel. Yeah, Origin A is a great reel, but I noticed so much of their stuff is on sale. Okay, we're at 130. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't really know anybody over there with them or anybody that follows like the back side of their stuff. So also, let's see. Kurt Gleason, you're still up for a giveaway. You never... Um, sent me anything. So I should have said, if you're a Canadian brethren, I'll figure out something else. Wet dog smell has won before. Are you Canadian friend? I know you went a won a while back. Uh, let's see. Yep. Wet dog again. Wet dog won not too long ago. Background. Was that Christmas? No, not Christmas. Christ, we just passed Christmas. Black Friday with like a Black Friday thing or something. Woohoo, Minnesota. Okay. Wet dog smell. Are you an extra or are you an extra large? Are you a large wet dog smell? Uh, wet dog smell. The wet dog smell. Simer. Simer. Uh, will I be making or painting lures? Yeah, I've got some uh, some project stuff I'm working on, actually. So, oh, so large. 
Are you really? Because if you're large, I'll throw it in and I'll, I'll mark it here now. But obviously you're a fan if you know about the all oh, so large of Debo's channel. Um, yeah, Brendan. Hello, by the way. Um, and actually, speaking of Brendan, I was going to put this on beforehand as I was cleaning stuff out. I got to give a shout to him because he sent a giveaway for, God, that's been a while back. He sent a giveaway for um, a crank that he had painted for somebody. But eh? Look at that. Brown Bait Co. Thank you very much, Brennan, for sending that over. And it is it is in the old chubby Husky Debo extra large size. So thank you, brother. Yeah, you like that stubby? Yeah, thank you, Brennan. What a nice guy. Yeah. What a nice guy to send that. Um, so yes, I will be painting. I'm going to work on some jig stuff. I just made a crap ton of uh, like Ned Rig heads and stuff. So I got to get to powder painting that but yeah i'll be messing around i'm not going to continue doing the the lure sales and stuff of the website you know a number of people messaged me were upset about that but just the time and the and everything with it is i just i cannot keep up with it so <laughs> did he include any eyes yeah exactly brennan we're, i was just talking about you earlier i never got those dead shad eyes so Okay, well, what dog smell when you email me? Send me an email, debosfishing at gmail.com with your address and a screenshot so I know it's you. If you're large, um, send that in there and let me know. Well, I guess I'll need to know because of the second person. What dog smell? Tell me. Are you a large, damn it? Okay, so otherwise, what else do you guys got for questions, comments, lures? Lure, what else do you think are going to be big lures? Do you think there's going to be new ones coming out this year that maybe you've even heard of that you shouldn't? from, uh, you know, behind the scenes from somebody that you're excited about. What kind of clear coat do I use on my fishing lures? Uh, so if we're talking about uh, plastic, like cranks and stuff, either KBS. KBS smells absolutely horrible, though. So KBS is nice because it's just a dip, dip and hang. That's actually what, well, you can't see it over here. But over here I had to make, a, I took like a big Rubbermaid container got a fan, had to make a whole draft system for doing it down here. And it hooks right up. I used a, a dryer thing and made a frame for my window. So it pulls all the air out. Horribly stinky, bad smell to it. So you have to have something to vent that or do it outside somewhere. Um, otherwise, the better option is BSI, Bob Smith Industries, or is it DevCon, I think is the name of it two-part epoxy make sure you get the 30 minute and you just take you know squeeze the two things that come in little bottles like this this is my fish food for my fish here but you know you squeeze equal amounts you stir it up and then it it sets within the stuff gets sticky enough where you can't paint it on crankbaits within probably like seven eight minutes but for it to fully cure it says it's a 30 and it depends on your temperature and stuff but that's actually the easier one to use because it has no smell to it and then you just hang them i've actually got a rotator over here you can buy um Amazon has them for people that make the tumblers, like the, you know, the drinking cup things. People do like custom designs and stuff. And then I made it so you can just use like little uh, deals you stick in there and keep it turning. But yeah, Aluma light UV, if you have black lights, yeah, you can cure that super fast. You have to make like a little um, like box for it and keep all that in there. But again, that's a, a dip one. What else we got? Um, yeah, I've always liked 13. I wonder what happened now that a bigger company owns them. Yeah, I don't know, man. I've had good luck with 13 reels. And actually, the rods, too. I have not had any stinkers. Actually, back, and I've still got it, my favorite combo of all time was my Luz LFS that I had on the number eight. Uh, was it the Hellbent or something like that? Got it from Gander. Actually, here's our Gander story. It was a day after Christmas sale at Gander. I think it was $19 I got it for. Those rods used to be, I think, 70 or 60 And then the other one was like 70 something. I don't they had two. But anyway, it was the Hellbent, which was the budget version of 13, like their little sister company. I guess for us poor blue collar folks that couldn't afford the real 13. But anyway, bought that rod for 20 bucks. And dude, it was such a great do-it-all rod. For $20, the, the best $20 ever spent. So, 
Yeah, that's another. Is that the green one? And it must be because of the color. I think Tack Warehouse still had them on sale. Uh, that was one that surprised me that it didn't sell 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 better. Oops, there's the wet dog smell. That's the wrong share here. Um, it was one that surprised me that it didn't sell better because it was a great little reel. But yeah, the color was horrendous. I'm not sure why they decided to go bright snot green, but um, they did still have these on sale actually when I looked. Yeah. Yeah, the SZ. 99 bucks, $150 reel. Well worth $99. So they've still got looks like just right hands for 99 bucks if you're looking for one. Great little reel, horrible color. They cast super nice too. So, and it's an aluminum frame. Um, let's see. 13 Fishing was 40% owned by Rapala for the last two years. Oh. Hmm. I don't know what they're doing, marking stuff all down on getting rid of it. What was my new reel of 2023? My favorite, if you're asking, for sure, hands down, the Tattoo 100. New Tattoo 100 was the best, quote unquote, new reel from last year. Um, tied with the Zillion, tied with the SLX MGL. No, now, I know those weren't like all new for last year, but the only real new one last year was the Tattoo 100. But and I don't want to. I don't want to spoil it because I'm going to have a best and worst of of 2023 gear that I'm working on still. Um, yeah, I think those are probably my top three. Yeah, the Corrado M was not. Jermaine just said, "Wow, no Corrado M, great reel, but it wasn't." There's minimal difference. I mean, you get the MGL spool in it over the K. Like, I don't know. I don't know that I'm. I want to say I was let down, but it was just. It was good. Like the K. I don't I don't know. Kind of a weird deal. Gramps said the SLX XT DC. Yeah, I think that's a uh <laughs> Mike says dial homer. Yeah, I'm one of those now that you can say, oh, I'm a this guy, I'm a Shimano guy. That's why I never bought Shimano for the longest time because I was tired of the pretentious pricks that would be like, Oh, I don't use Shimano. But for good reason, they do make really good reels but yeah the uh the slx mgl i know we had looked at that before on american legacy speaking of gramps use his code over there help him out um they had the slx mgl's quote unquote you know use like new they're brand new in the box for 99 bucks so great deal over there i had a couple of those i ended up giving one away yeah, Kuda, I agree. I don't know why. I think you know, I know it's for the younger crowd marketing, but yeah, I'm not sure why they go that crazy. Like, it's okay to have some of it in there, but interesting. Anthony says, real wise, if it ain't, ain't JDM, I ain't using it. I think there's a lot of good reels out there. It's it's a good mix. Okay, let's get the second giveaway going here in just a minute. What else we got for, there was another one up here. Um, oh yeah. So like Cecil was asking, is Abu Garcia and Luz good for beginner? Absolutely. People will talk crap about that stuff because some of it's made in China. You know what? Look at the Shimano X pride rod, 200 and some dollar rod. Guess where it's made, made in China. Um, I think also the, uh, the Corrado rods, great rods. I think those are also made in China. Um, I know for sure the, uh, the X pride is, which is crazy to think about, but the reason I know is because I had an argument with a gentleman talking about, I only use Japan made rods and reels. I only use the Metanium on my X prize. I'm like, well, funny enough, those are made in China. No, they're not. That's all Japan made. He went look at it and sent a picture back made in China. He's like, damn it. He's like, well, I use some Chinese stuff. <laughs> at least he wasn't a prick about it. So we laughed and he's like, yeah, I guess I just really like it. But yeah, Luz, Luz has some great stuff. Like I said, the LFS, one of the best beginner reels out there for 99 bucks some good rods and stuff too. They had a deal where you could get, um, that's been a while ago actually, but you could get like 40% off on one rod or something. They had a code. But I think that was directly on the Berkeley, the pure fishing website. Um, our Brazilian mid November still waiting for it. Oh, what? Where from Matt? Was it overseas? I'm a botany JDM stuff. Japan. Japan fishing lures, I want to say, is the one. And Digitaka were the only two that I had ever used. 
just because they're reputable, but I haven't ordered stuff from there recently. Yeah, the neon green. 13 did a lot of that crap with the crazy colors. Um, made in North Korea. Yeah, I like the North Korean reels. Sorry. And, you know, people will say, you know, we've had conversations on this before. A lot of it's just rebranded Doyo stuff, right? Doyo is the company that actually makes, you know, Luz and Abu. Um, there's different. Banex is the one who makes 13. There's, oh, what are some of the other ones? I, there's like three big ones overseas. But, yeah, Doyo makes good stuff. It would be interesting to see. Well, I guess they couldn't for the American market because they already have companies that do that. But. Yeah, I mean, I've I've had good luck with their stuff. So, Cooler Lid purchased the Daiwa on my recommendation. How'd you like it, man? Yeah, Silver Max, Silver Max, and Black Max were great learner reels. Actually, now that we're talking about Abu Garcia, if you want real budget, the Max X from Abu Garcia, <clears throat> wait for sale. You can get those for like thirty bucks, thirty five bucks. I got mine from Tackle Warehouse sale. Best budget reel out there, in my opinion, right now. I think regular they're fifty nine dollars which we could go check here. And it, they kind of suck because they only come in one speed, but it's a seven speed, so I don't mind that. If you don't like seven speeds, you won't like it. Whoops. Uh, Abu Reels. Yeah, 59 bucks. I think it's a seven five. Is that what it comes in? Oh, six speed. I was thinking it was a seven speed. So it's a six four, but... So that's the only part that sucks about it. No speeds but, or uh, no speed choices. But yeah, for a budget reel, hands down, that's my favorite right now. And it is graphite frame, you know, and stuff. But like I've said, just don't use it for crazy, crazy heavy stuff if you have, you know, a couple ones to choose from. Ah, uh, interesting. So maybe they're just get rid of all, getting rid of all the old stuff, Dustin. Yeah, I said the Meta series, which is the newest one. I haven't played with any of those. Yeah, maybe they're just come out with new models. They're probably kind of due for some of that re redoing some different lines. I know they just come out with the A2, um, the concept Z slide, which I, I really like both of them. Uh, got a smoke and deal in a zillion through Omnia. It's pretty meh. What? Hold on, let me ban beef here. You know why? I guarantee beef's a Shimano guy. Cool story, bro. I'm just kidding. No, that's, you know, everybody, it's different. I know a lot of people don't like the, <clears throat> don't like the Daiwa fit in hand. The Zillion's actually a little bit smaller, so I don't know. That probably wouldn't be it, but, um, oh yeah, hashtag second giveaway, sorry. Um, but a lot of people don't like the other Daiwas, like the Tattoos, because they're a little bit bigger in hand, and that's why I do like them. So that's, you know, a very, very good point. If you don't like Daiwa, some of their stuff's a little bit, a little bit larger. Uh, okay, so people saying other stuff here. I'm going to get the second giveaway going. Uh, and actually, I'm going to have to redo it because people might not be here. So must be present to win. If you're a Canadian brethren, I'll probably do something different. Maybe not. Just depends on if you really want the lures or not. It sucks that it costs like 30 bucks to ship something. It's stupid. And I guess maybe it depends where, but hashtag. Um, hmm, let's do something fun. Uh, hashtag. Hashtag fun. There you go. Ah, get it? Something fun. I was trying to think of something fun, but okay. Hashtag zillion. I really like my zillion. Matt Hatfield said American legacy. Yep. They got some good deals. Yeah, exactly. David, that inception SZ is mean. I got it from the same tackle warehouse sale. Yeah. It's a great reel. It just, I think it just kind of pooped out because of the color and the sales just didn't do well, but yeah, the, the, uh, the reel itself is good. I really liked it. <clears throat> Uh, let's see, Matt, you need to call, talk to Brian, Mike Debo's fishing. You are spot on. You would be amazed how many so-called JDM rods are made in China. We had, yep. Yep. I get it, Mike. A lot of, a lot of those places are, which is interesting. Oh, 
<laughs> Did somebody say North Korea before South Korea? Yeah, I didn't even catch that. Korean made is what I was looking at. Yeah, not North Korea. I don't. I don't think they're a, a good trading partner of uh, of the U.S. Yeah, supporting the good old USA. Actually, speaking about that bassless chap, I've really been interested in, and I'm not. I don't, I don't want to pay it, so I have to see if they have a good sale or something. But those new baits reels, I've been interested in trying one of those. Um, all CNC cut, made in Texas. Be cool to see. Wet dog smell with a twenty dollar bomb. Thank you, brother. Thanks for the entertaining Saturday nights. Wet dog, are you a damn large or not? I didn't see it. If you're not, I'm just going to give it to the second person. So large, you said before, but I need to know if you're actually really a large wet dog smell. Uh, <laughs> oh, Anthony, I can't put that up here. I almost clicked on it because I just read the back of it, of his uh, comment. But he said, he says he feels like reels are like, let's just say a, a fine lady or a fine person of your choosing. It's got to fill the entire hand. So... <laughs> <laughs> draw draw whatever conclusion you want there that cracked me up i almost clicked on it <clears throat> yeah but yeah for a lot of reels you do have to get them in hand especially if you have like a specific fit you really like you have to make sure that it's going to fit your hand style lots of hashtag funds here i'm going back to see if i missed any questions or anything yeah, so people were talking about, oh, graphite's fine. That's something I would like to test is, you know, because they have, and I've said this again before too, I sound like a, a broken record, but, you know, some of the new like C45 carbon and some of these other, you know, kind of mixes, um, it would be really interesting to see like actual strength tests of these compared to, you know, like a, a full aluminum. If Debo, <laughs> if Debo doesn't get a kayak this year, he has to give me a zillion. Hey, I'm 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 up for it. I just I need to figure out something to do with my John boat and how I'm gonna haul it and all that. So and I would have to buy it. It would be obviously a, a large purchase. So <clears throat> no, Arden is not anymore. I'm pretty sure somebody said they are made in I forget where, but yeah, I, I heard that too back in the day. They used to be. Uh let's see. What is this giveaway for, Caleb asked? Caleb, it's for fun. It's for a bunch of lures. I didn't even get them all put together. I was just grabbing random stuff beforehand. So I have one of the A10s since we were talking about all the Thunderhawk stuff. And again, thank you, Mike, for sending over goodies to share with folks. Oh, and we'll need to put some of those in here too. I'll throw in some of his tubes, um, a frog, some of the drop shot stuff, because I appreciate him sending stuff over to share with us. Talk about old school. These are some that I like that they don't get talked about really much anymore. Well, maybe they do. I guess I don't see people talking about them a lot. But remember the old double double twister tail grubs? That's exactly what this is. Great for a trailer on a number of different things. Missile baits, they call it the twin turbo craw. But again, one of those things that missile baits revamped, you know. How many times did you throw a double tail craw? Uh, double tail craw. Double tail grub back in the day, right? Old school kind of thing. Companies revamping it, right? Which I'm not mad at it. I think it's cool. I've got some of the dream shots. If you like to uh, do the whole drop shot game. Some castaic jerk baits. The jerky J. I've got a spinner bait. Speaking of your bluegill color that you can throw. I've got some spro pocket tail minners. Which is like a segmented type swim bait and i had because i was doing this i had this over in my stuff where i was doing a showing different baits with trailers and stuff you'll also get in the package rigged so be careful when you open this whoever wins it it's rigged up with a cross eyes and i was talking about paddle tails because look at how small the paddle tail on this is good movement but it's not overpowering the paddle tail that's the big thing for people that say oh don't put paddle tails on jerk or uh chatter baits you're doing it wrong no just don't put a crazy one on there so that's inside there so be careful but that's already rigged up for you the cross size well i guess i should have said too for anybody new to the this was one of my favorite kind of quote unquote newer chatter baits it's got two wires here so if you're a bank angler in my opinion best chatter bait for bank anglers when you're fishing around wood because it doesn't get hung up all the time chatter bait hands down has to be one of the top three lures that i lose the most from the bank regular chatter baits so 
That's why this one. Oh, yes. Large shirt will fit me, wet dog smell. Okay. So the shirt will go to you, my friend. And then I'll throw some more lures in here. I just started the bag. Some of the Thunderhawk stuff. I might throw a couple more in there. But, Caleb, that's what the giveaway is for. Um, okay. Wet dog smell. I better mark that down before I forget. Plus large shirt. Okay, so let's draw here, and then we will... Oh, yeah, the, uh, the Alloy M. That's the only Pissifin reel, funny enough, that I've tried. That was a pretty solid little reel, actually, aluminum frame. Digworks, thanks for the fun Saturday night, Debo. Well, thank you, brother, for the, uh, the $10 bomb. I appreciate that a lot. You better not chew ice. Bad habit to chew on ice. In the in the mic, it's not too too nice to chew ice. Um, the seven reels by Saint Croix. I don't have one. I wasn't too you know impressed. I mean, they look decent, but it wasn't anything where I was like, oh, I really want to try that. Yeah, Alloyam's a good reel under hundred bucks. Yeah, I had good luck with it. It wasn't the smoothest. You know, it's it had its things to it. I should have done a review on that way back. Do I still have that one? I might have given that away, actually. Um, let's see. Question. Debo, a new Intanium DC is coming out. I did see that. Will you be ordering a few for giveaways? <laughs> I probably won't. I honestly, the Metanium wasn't one of my... I had a Metanium, and it... I don't know. It's, it's hard to say how... And I'm not a Shimano hater. I kind of come off that way as a Daiwa fanboy. But... Um, smoothness the bantam and that some of the smoothest reels you can get for sure casting i guess i just wasn't as crazy impressed as what i thought of what kind of a caster it would be um great reel though super smooth fits amazing in hand um so i don't know just for the price i don't know like i said this year i think i'm going to really try to focus more on budget stuff instead of going so crazy on spending really try to focus on that more um but i don't know we'll see you know there might be something in there that i you know, how big is my John boat? It's only 11 foot. It's like 11 and 11 foot, five inches. It's a super old one. Yeah. A10. Absolutely, dude. A10. If I could, I've dad and I, my dad's been a huge, um, airplane nerd for a long time. And I've said forever, if I could fly any, any airplane, it would be the A10. I'd be an A10 pilot for sure. Um, people talking about more kayak stuff. Yeah. I mean, I've, uh, we're at 150. Actually, we're going to pull here. I didn't pull one. Did I? Sometimes I get off on tangents here and I forget what I have and haven't done. Um, so let's see, must be present to win. You're going to need to email me with a screenshot of your YouTube. So I know it's you. And if you're a Canadian brethren or sister in, I guess we'll have to talk because it'll cost nine thousand dollars to send it not a bot i think not a bot just one not too long ago too what's up with this stuff well not a bot you uh you're a winner tonight let's see i'm gonna have to skip ahead here sorry i'll go back and look at comments <clears throat> is there a pro version of zebco lure lab actually funny enough they came out with we'll go look here they have a magnesium zebco now is it actually might be a zebco let's look here real quick um, but it's like a hundred something bucks for a magnesium framed <laughs> dude. It's freaking, I cracked up when I saw that, like who's, and it's not. Okay. So he's here. So not a bot email me with your info. Email me with your stuff, and I will get you that out. Um, but, yeah, let's look here real quick. So congrats on the winners tonight. Um, yeah, I want to say it was Zebco that released it. Maybe not. Hold on. Let's see. Because I think they have, yeah, so they have the category... Uh, yeah, Zebco Bullet. How about this? $140 Zebco Bullet magnesium frame. Who is buying a $140? Put 
push button reel. And I don't have anything against them. If you want us to use push button reel still, that is absolutely fine. I had a Zebco 33 back in the day. Nothing wrong with that. But like, I just don't imagine the sales on that are uh, are enough to keep up with it. Who knows, though? Hell, what, what do I know? I'm a guy in a basement. Uh, yeah, so Lure Lab says he's going to go buy one of those. <laughs> uh let's see what else what else we got for questions hit me with some questions we'll answer a couple more here hang out for a little bit what's the iowa game what's the update gramps is it over yet should be getting close to being over now right uh yeah you know what actually funny enough i bought a cheap abu one back that was what two years ago when i had that 50 percent off coupon deal um for skipping and i actually bought a small one for my daughter so if you just want like a do it all, like little, and, and I should say like little stuff, like skipping crappy stuff, um, but little tiny things like that. Cause you're not going to backlash, you know, you could you do it on a, uh, um, they don't have them here. It was directly on their website, but it was the smaller abus. Could you do it with a, a spinning reel? Absolutely. But just kind of fun to play with it. And then I bought one for my daughter to use as well. So, Yeah. And I think somebody else was saying like on the pro tournament, they still have one that they use for skipping. Cause like, they're like, I suck at skipping. So I still have a, a push button reel to do that. And they kind of chuckled. So who cares if it's catching a fish? Um, let's see high failure rate on the Zebco bullets. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't used any of the new ones, but yeah, I did get my old Zebco 33 out like a long, that's been what, five, six years ago, Dizzle and I did a challenge. God, the drag on it's awful. It's got the plastic handles, you know, they're just, it's funny how, oh, they won by quite a bit. Well, dang it. Sorry, Gramps. Um, it's funny how far some of the, you know, some of the, the reels and stuff have come, especially for the money in that price point. Um, let's see, 100, yeah, 140 bucks for a tricked out Zebco. What else we got? Pissifin has huge sales going on. I'm, I'm not a Pissifin guy. I'm only, like I said, I've only used the one. Uh, yeah, that's the other thing. Oh, so that was one thing I was going to talk on too, is I think the BFS stuff is going to continue just to grow. That was one, obviously we've seen have a big jump last year. I think it's going to continue to grow. I'm still not, I don't know where the big, um, the attraction to it is, but I did hella bass shared some snippets of, him and Gary on and Gary said, yeah, I can't like, I can't even keep the supply going, like keep up with the demand on the BFS rods and stuff. Cause they have the Sierra and that's what I bought. Funny enough. I bought the Dobbin Sierra. They had a sale over at American legacy, bought that with the, um, SLX BFS. I, I don't get what the huge draw to it is. There's a couple things that I can see. Um, cat, like for actual, like if you don't, if you're not in the BFS, like, Casting small cranks, I think it could be a really, really good deal for that. Some smaller top waters, I think it could be really, really fun for, but I'm just not big into that. I'm gonna throw a 187th on this thing. It's like I'll just use my I'll use my spinning reel. But you know, to each his own. If you just really hate spinning reels or you just want, you know, to do that, I guess. Jim, I see people saying Jim is the junkie of tackles in here. There he is, you handsome dog, you. Hopefully you're good, Jim. Are you staying warm over there? Damn, Mahomes broke his helmet. It's so cold out. That's crazy. I like it for Ned Riggs. Yeah, I can see that too. That makes sense. All right, what else we got? Let's do a couple more questions and I'm going to get out of here. A couple more fun ones. What all do you got? Five degrees. Yeah, it's negative eight right here now, Jim. Low cold. Low, low, low cold. Um, using a spin caster to skip a weightless trick worm way up under overhangs. Yeah, absolutely. Casting. I used to skip flukes with it. <clears throat> Works great for that. Because I'm not, I mean, I can skip a jig, but I'm not like, I can't skip anything. You know, some guys skip buzz baits and swim baits and all this crazy stuff. I'm not that good. You know, give me a three eight ounce jig and I'm fine. But yeah, for like weightless worms, you know, weightless flukes, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Don't be afraid to use a spinning reel. Who cares? Who's going to judge you? Like if, if somebody's that bored that they're going to judge you on what kind of rod and reel you're using to skip stuff, they've got way worse problems in their life. So screw them.
Favorite frog under nine dollars. Oh, I think the Spros are nine ninety nine now, right? I think they went up, so that's not in there. Um, I really like the River to Seas. Those aren't going to be. I think the best budget frog on the market's the uh, Pad Crasher would be my pick. Used to be four ninety nine at Walmart. Used to get them for. Now I think they've gone up a little bit. We can check, uh, but I think that's probably the best budget frog. Last quite a while. Nothing fancy about them. They work. They last. Uh, let's see. Buhia. The Crasher of the Pads. Where is it? Oh, yeah. Not too bad. Six ninety nine. Yeah, the secret color in this one. So uh, Night Train is a bestseller for a reason. If I could only pick one, that would be my color pick. Uh, my number two, which is Slept On, is the Old Smokey. And I like the big ones. I don't like the junior size. The big ones are already kind of small. So just skip the junior go to the standard size. Um, they also have like a green, an off-color green one that's pretty good. It's not the leopard frog. Is it bullfrog? Uh, I thought it was like a green and yellow. No. Oh, is that? No, it's not the pumpkin seed. I thought they had a green. Oh, is it fire tiger? Yeah, fire tiger. I like that one too. It's kind of deer tay. So yeah, Pad Crasher would be my pick. Pop and Perch. I like the Pop and Perch too. That was one of those that I thought was kind of a gimmicky, stupid looking thing. Um, Pop and Perch. Yeah, I liked it because I wanted to cut off the tails of it. If you've never seen it, it's like a got like a fish tail with uh, like a thicker flat silicone instead of like the frog legs. The I don't even know what you would call it. It's almost like the old spinnerbait skirts. That flat kind of longer. I don't know. Anyway. Um, Pop and perch, yeah, and I never cut the tails on it. I left it full length, and I had, there was one year that was my favorite frog for sure. I remember it was one of the spots where the turtle chased, if y'all remember that old video. I think I caught three, three and a half pounders that day on it. And then I had one break me off that I hoped to God was a turtle because it was a big explosion. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Did the Matuzo frogs work? No, those things are junk. I had two of them. They sucked. Uh, also, the Walmart, the Ozark Trail ones suck. Don't even waste your money on it. Spend $2 more and get a Booyah Pad Crasher. Matuzos, those are the ones that are at Dick's, for anybody wondering. That's personally my take on them. I think they're both crap. And not to say that all of them are. Ozark, Hidden hidden Gym for the cheap ones. Ozark Trail Lipless. Um, I forget what they call it. Uh, but it's almost an exact replica of the old like Excaliburs. As far as looking and such of it, you know, sound, I'm sure. I don't have any of the old Excaliburs. People pay stupid money for those, but it's that type of, like a, a red-eye shad kind of type look to it. Um, but it's a really good blank. Really, really good blank. I've repainted them and had really good luck. The hooks are trash on them, so you have to redo the hooks um, when you buy them. But, yeah, that's kind of a good little hidden secret. Uh, let's see. I got my pad crasher bit off last year. I was hella pissed. Yeah, man. Pike will do that. One bite from a pike will ruin a frog. Tail Taco Bell, what? Uh, old Smokey is a good color. Yeah, man, the Old Smokey is a great secret color. It's not really secret, but... Mega Bass Karashi, I don't know what that is. I'm not a big Mega Bass... Well, speaking of frogs, the Mega Bass Big Gabo is an awesome frog. Costs too much, but um, great little frog. Really good frog because you can really get it to pop and walk. Yeah, William, they're they're not good. So are the Ozark ones. Randy bought me some of the Ozark trail ones to try. Neither of mine floated. Like, they're good for one cast, and then you have to make them pee every single time. I mean, the hooks and stuff were fine on them. I didn't catch a fish on it, but yeah, as far as, like, working well. And then even sometimes middle of the, like, cast, they're already sinking because they take on water, so... Um, what else we got? What else we got for questions? This or that? Gas station sushi or day old Taco Bell? In the fridge? Or are we talking left out? I love leftovers. Anything that I can just grab and eat, for sure I'd eat cold Taco Bell, no problem. Gas station sushi? Yeah, I'm not, not real keen on that. 
<laughs> all but one was trash after testing 10. Yeah, that's why it's it's worth just you know spending a couple more and getting a decent one. Uh, let's see, Ozark Trail Plastics made by American Bait Works. Really? Hmm. Well, their frog sucks, so get the scum frog instead, I guess. Have you got, tried the Guggen Baits frogs? No, I did try one, but I was not a fan. They were hard. I didn't like them. Scum frogs, yeah, actually the scum frog, the trophy one. Oops, sorry, that was probably really loud. The trophy one, um, I think that's what it's called. It was kind of their mid price one, like six bucks, I want to say. It was actually surprisingly good. Thoughts on the six cents rods. Um, I've only tried a couple of them. I had the MF for rod. It was all right. There was nothing crazy about it. Um, I did like that it came in a medium heavy or heavy moderate fast. I forget what the exact specs on it were. It was one you wouldn't find a ton of. I think they call it the Zark one. I think Milliken's buddy is the Zark or whatever. Um, I really liked the action, like the feel of it really good, but it wasn't like overly sensitive. And that's kind of their more budget option rod. I had the... Um, I forget what the other one is. I've tried two of the others. They were pretty good. I like the, uh, what was the one with Well, here? We can look real quick. I haven't tried any of the new ones. I haven't bought a six cents rod for a minute. Um, just cause obviously Millican and those guys, they get a ton of airplay. So it's like, I don't even really need to test them. There's so many people doing, you know, all the six cents guys are showing them off and stuff. So it's like, there's no point. People are going to watch Millican for that stuff. Not me. So. Um, I forget you have to go to shop brands. Uh, sixth cents. So what was the one I had? It had the whole, oh, ESP. That was a really nice one. 174 bucks. Only thing I didn't like is it had, yeah, this is the one that had the like micro guides on it. I'm just not a micro guide fan. I had another and there was like a mid priced one. I thought. I thought I had one more. I had three of them. Six cents USA custom. I've never even seen these. 370. Ooh. I swear there was one more. Vega frog. Ooh, talk about a frog that I don't like. Six cents Vega frog. Hook up for me it has been trash on it. I did not like it. Walks great. Pops great. Action of it is amazing. But oh, sensory was the other. Yeah, I got one of these on sale. This one is obviously really nice too. You know what I hated about it? Couldn't stand it. Tiny little wimpy trigger. Hate little tiny triggers like that. <clears throat> but yeah, but that ESP one actually was probably my favorite that I had tried. That was a really nice rod. And the Millican one, like I said, that, uh, oh, here we can look real quick. That action is just one that you don't see much. It was a heavy, moderate, fast. I feel like it was a good, like not a... Um, like a floppy noodly one, but like a good backbone into a good soft, like moderate fast actual tip. So I really, really like that one. Actually, that power in action is, like I said, it's one you don't, I feel like you don't find a good one like that very often. Because I was throwing like my half ounce chatter baits on that, felt really good for that. And then smaller like swim baits and stuff. <clears throat> All right, what else we got? One more, we got one more question. Um, Arid X, absolutely, dude, for sure. Arid X, um, one of the best budget rods out there right now. I've said it before, that one and the uh, Arc Catalyzer. Also the Shimano Celis. All three really, really good budget rods. Um, people talking about other stuff. There you go. Ned Rig Nerd, that's where we're going to end it. Those are my three top under $100 rods. If you're looking right at $100, the um, Daiwa Tatula XT that they just redid and the SLX rods are both nice at that price too. But sub under that money, I think those are good choices. But that's it. That's it for me. I'm getting out of here. Listen, I love you all. Thank you all for coming to hang out. I'll be back again next Saturday. We'll think of something. Thanks for watching. And uh, until next time.